Good evening and welcome to Celebrate Recovery here in Indiana, Pennsylvania. It is so good to have you join us tonight. And as always, or at this time, I wish it could be in person, but again, we are um, online and doing Zoom groups uh, to manage, to continue with our recovery meetings at this time during the uh, COVID virus. We want to be safe and we wanna keep you all safe. So I hope you all are doing things as well to keep yourself and your family safe. I am Pastor Jackie Green, a grateful believer in Jesus Christ, who has struggled with codependency and perfectionism and many sinful things, uh, sinful decisions in my life that has led to different uh, hurts and baggage and things that I have had to work through. And I am so glad to say that in recovery, I have overcome these things, but continue to work on them. And most recently I am working on um, trying to find out the root reason why I can't stay on a healthy lifestyle as far as eating and exercise and just being disciplined in that way. So I welcome you. And tonight we are going to have a lesson uh, that's entitled Yes. And we are on lesson 24, which means that we are in the next to last lesson. Um, for our cycle uh, for this year. So we are getting close to the end of the calendar year as well as our Celebrate Recovery year. But one of the things that uh, I really miss doing in person but I absolutely want uh, to do and celebrate is what we call celebration time. And that's a time when we give out chips, when we um, acknowledge each other's recovery and success and progression in that and we love to celebrate so we clap and we hug in the days when we were allowed to hug each other and we cheer for each other and i always say where else can you go in life that someone actually literally cheers you on so when i talk about handing out chips and celebration time um, we actually have chips uh, that we give and it's not about the chip but it's just about the acknowledgement of what you're doing and a reminder of that you are doing this. So in Celebrate Recovery, we're here for all those, which is all of us with hurts, habits, and hangups. And so when we come together and seek the Lord for what it is he would have us work on and acknowledge and uh, just become free from and have victory in, it's really interesting because sometimes we come to Celebrate Recovery with preconceived notions of why we're here but when you really ask the Lord and let him tell you oftentimes it isn't the really big thing or the big glaring thing that he has you work on first because what we do is we um, go down to the root we try to go down to the layers underneath and find out the why and so you need to really hear from the Lord as to what you would be working on but when you do have something that you feel that you're going to uh, make an effort in and ask the Lord into, we give you a blue chip. So tonight, if there is something you know that the Lord is going to have you work on or something you really want to commit to working on, go ahead and raise your hand in the comments, make a comment, and I will be sure to get you this blue chip. The blue chip says the journey begins, and that's our journey in recovery and our journey with the Lord. And on the other side, it says my grace is sufficient for you. Because in Celebrate Recovery, um, it is a 12-step program, but it is based on the Bible and our higher power being Jesus Christ. So that is where the grace comes from to do what we need to do. And if you have come and, and you're joining us and you really just don't know what you're working on, but just made the step to walk through the door to say, I'm here, that's good enough to take a blue chip and know that you're here among us friends and family and people who care and who will pray for you. And so then we um, celebrate in increments of 30 days up until um, a year and then we do 18 months in two years and uh, go a year at a time. So um, go ahead and comment so that we can uh, cheer and clap for you and then I can take note and get you your chips um, as soon as I can. So if you are free of a hurt habit or hang up for 30 days, 60 days or 90 days, let us clap and cheer for you. How about four, five, or six months? It's amazing progress that we make. How about seven, eight, or nine months? 10 months, 11 months, and then a year, 
and then again 18 months or beyond. So please let me know. And I just don't ever want to miss a time of celebrating with you. And actually, I get to celebrate 30 days. I had, uh, at the beginning of 2020, um, taken a blue chip to really, again, work on this uh, eating. And I got the whole way up to seven months. And I had chosen an eating plan that I was doing really well with and actually lost weight and doing the best I'd ever done with that. And then just really, as time went on, I uh, let that go and was struggling again. Um, and so I, I quit taking chips because I just did not feel that I was in the right place. And so I backed off and I prayed about it. And God has shown me a few things in that area. And it's not that I'm working on losing weight and taking chips for it or that I'm working on staying committed to this eating plan, but it's about the deeper things in me as to why. So I uh, took a blue chip again and started over um, as God had told me. And so you can celebrate with me 30 days, right? Yay me. Okay, well, thanks so much for taking time to do that. And now we'll go ahead and get into the lesson. And like I said, the lesson is entitled, Yes. And what's what's the yes about? Well, the lesson is... Uh, on principle eight, based on principle eight and step 12. And in Celebrate Recovery, we only have eight principles and 12 steps. So as you can see, uh, like I said, we're t towards the end of our year here. Principle eight is yield myself to God to be used to bring this good news to others, both by my example and by my words. And step 12 is having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others to practice these principles in all our effort, in all of our affairs. And the spiritual experience is acknowledging Jesus Christ as our higher power and coming into relationship with him. And if you already have a relationship with him when you come to Celebrate Recovery, it's a place to go deeper with him or to recommit and get closer, absolutely. So it's very interesting and concerning actually when we look at what our society tells us about people that are in pain. Oftentimes we find, and they tend to tell us, that pain is useless. That, you know, as humans, we do everything we can to avoid pain, actually. We um, go roundabout situations, we avoid situations, we try to control, we try to manipulate things so that we don't have pain. Um, sometimes we self-medicate with pills or drugs or alcohol so that we don't have pain because we fall into this belief that the pain that we're dealing with is useless. And to be more specific, um, society may say that the people in pain are useless. And I'm here to say that's just not true. You know, oftentimes I have said and I have personally experienced that God never wastes a hurt. And that is absolutely true, and I can speak from experience. My husband, Jim, and I, um, Jim is part of the ministry uh, with me, and oftentimes is uh, a part of the video, but he's, he's not this evening. <laughs> but we have endured a lot of pain. And actually, just last week, I uh, was Thanksgiving, and on Thanksgiving Day, that happened to mark 28 years since our infant son um, was born and only lived a day and passed away the following day. He was premature and there was some um, infection and things that the doctors could not explain and he was unable to, um, to live. That was one of the hardest things that we have ever dealt with, but we have also dealt with a lot of marital problems and um, drug and alcohol issues and along with all of that stuff, a lot of baggage comes along with that and a lot of things we've had to work through. And we've had each had parents that have passed away and uh, from different things and so we have had our share of hurt and pain and I can tell you firsthand that God has used that pain he uses it for good when you go to him when you're seeking him and you're saying I can't do anything Lord without you I can't take this anymore I need your help he is right there he ushers in his grace he is right there he is never far from us. It's just a matter of us turning to him. And once we do that, he absolutely uses the pain for good. I know myself after our son passed away, um, it was a time like none other. And I actually recommitted my life to the Lord. I actually had an encounter with the Lord, uh, very personal and direct. And believe me, he got my attention and I recommitted my life to him. 
um, and never would have believed to actually become a pastor, be doing ministry, but God is allowing uh, Jim and I to use the things of our life to help others and to benefit them and to glorify God. So I absolutely can attest to God never wastes a hurt. So at CR, we do know that pain is valuable. It's not really something we wanna seek after, but we can embrace it and know that it is valuable. That is how we learn lessons. That is how we understand maybe, you know, some implications of our own uh, decisions that have caused us, you know, self-inflicted pain. I, I've been there as well. I've made bad decisions and have caused myself hurt and my husband hurt. So can you tell me what your pain has taught you in recovery? Is there any value in your pain? If you so desire, you can uh, comment at any time um, to these questions or even share in the comments maybe some way that you're relating to the message. But what has our pain taught us? We also believe that people in pain are of great value to God. And I have allowed myself to be used by God in and through my pain. And, and I believe that I'm of value to God. Um, because I love him, because I'm receiving his love, and because I'm giving that love to others. And we do that every Monday night by coming together and doing this ministry and supporting and loving on each other, absolutely. So while the world says no, that you have no value, tonight we say yes. Yes, you do. And that's where the yes comes for our lesson tonight. So the why... We always uh, like to do acrostics here at Celebrate Recovery. The Y in yes stands for principle eight itself, yield. Yield myself to God to be used to bring this good news to others, both by my example and by my words. At this point in our recovery, in this point in our lessons, if you're actually working the 12 steps, um, which is the crux of the program, we call it the step study, you are at a point that you can give back. And I can tell you again from experience that when you're at the point of actually doing for others, that is how um, a great amount of your healing actually starts. I know myself, people came and met me in my pain and they helped me. And the people that were most effective in that is people that had actually experienced the same thing that I experienced. I had a girlfriend from high school actually who had a, a son at four months die of SIDS and she was one of the most helpful people to me through that time. So God has brought a lot of women in my path that have had um, you know a variety of loss in that way and I've been able to minister to, the, to them and help them. So it's the the yielding, yielding ourselves to help others. You know what does it look like? Um, the yielding myself. It's, it's a surrender. It's saying, God, here I am and use me. Now, don't be um, afraid because I never thought that God was going to call me to be a pastor, that this is where my path would take me. But it's been an amazing adventure. And even in the adventure of becoming a pastor and, and ministering, sad to say I've actually been hurt and disappointed and abandoned. Um, abandonment is actually one of the issues that God is showing me that is my underlying issue from some of the different things um, that I have been struggling with. Um, but it's okay. It's okay to surrender to God because he wants what's best for us. He created us and he loves us more than anyone else could. And he is always there for us. And he has always been there for me. You know, it's a to yield means that we're giving up. We're giving up um, our rights to what we think. To what we think our plan is and what our purpose is we're we're giving that up and saying god i want what you have for me you know because we can have something that's really good for ourselves, but god has what's best for us and i want what's best and i want what's best for you so to give way to what is the stronger or the better that god has for us is what we're doing when we are yielding so if we are giving away or surrendering the right of way to God in our lives, what will that look like? And again, don't let that scare you because honestly, you know, when I think about it, I thought, you know, what I've done up to this point when I'm thinking back to when God really got my attention and got a hold of me, 
I didn't do very good with my own life. So why would I not let God lead my life? Like basically, what did I have to lose? And what I had to lose was a lot of heartache and misery and bad decisions and everything to gain. So you absolutely will have everything to gain. I believe we're supposed to hold on loosely to everything we call our own. You know, and, and that's something that I've learned even in ministry to just hold everything with an open hand. Um, because God will take things out of our hands, but then he will, you know, in place, replace it in our hands. So if we're holding on so tightly like this, God can't get it out of our hands. And I know I've done that. I've, I've got that God. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take care of that. It's my pain. I don't want to give up my pain. Sometimes we're just comfortable in our pain and we don't want to give it up. But when we go hear God and loosely hold on to things, he'll take out the bad and he'll put in good and all good things come from God so why wouldn't we want to yield to him you know we um, God can use us as his hands and feet to redeem this lost world to sit in the dark with the lost if you will and this year of 2020 we are seeing a lost world we are seeing a confused and a hurt world and we're a part of that so together we need to reach out to each other and help. So a good question here may be, how can I tell if I'm yielding myself to God? I mean, how can you really tell? Well, I believe a lot is in our attitude. You know, if you're constantly um, arguing with God or, or just struggling with, you know, having disciplines um, like that we teach and celebrate recovery, having quiet time with God and reading his word and praying and coming to our recovery meetings and being a part of a, you know, a Christian community and journeying together. If we have a bad attitude and we're just still all about me and not really willing to yield um, to the things that we have learned in our uh, celebrate recovery and in our steps, then I would say we're struggling, struggling with that. So would you see discipline in my life um, if I was yielding? Yes. We want to live a disciplined life. That means that, you know, we have a, a time that we do spend with the Lord each day. We not only pray and ask him for things, but we pray and we listen and then we obey and we do what God is showing us. Um, would be uh, testing my life against scripture. Um, again, in the reading of scripture, we always want to um, line our life up with that. And are we doing what we're actually reading? Like it's one thing to just say, oh, okay, I read a chapter today or a few verses or, you know, but what did it mean to us? How are we applying it? If you don't understand the Bible, then seek, you know, myself and we will find a way to help you with that. Because um, I know it's not always easy and, and it can get very confusing. But I do, again, know from experience that as you spend time with the Lord, as you get closer, as you spend time in Bible studies and, you know, going to church and, and learning, um, it, it starts to become easier. It starts to make sense. And God will help us. The Holy Spirit will help us, actually. Um, we should always ask the Holy Spirit uh, to help us when we're sitting down to read Scripture, to enlighten us and to, speak, you know, speak to our hearts about it. So now that brings us to the E in yes. The E stands for example. So people take your example more seriously than they take your advice. So they take your actions more seriously than your words. So I can sit here and talk to you all night, which I could, and I'm sure that you don't want me to. But if you see my actions, you see me doing things differently than what I'm speaking, that's not a good witness. Nobody's going to believe um, what you're saying. So we need to walk the walk that we're talking and be a good example. We all know that talk is cheap. And the big principle in Celebrate Recovery, if you want someone to see what Christ can do for them, let them see what Christ has done for you. So again, it's exciting to be able to share. Um, I was able to uh, be interviewed by one of the other pastors here in Indiana um, and was asking me about Celebrate Recovery and I really appreciated the opportunity to share and it was kind of 
um, funny because, you know, he just said, well, when, you know, we feel like we said everything, you know, we'll just wrap up the interview. And, and I thought to myself, he doesn't know that I could talk for hours about Celebrate Recovery because when I get um, excited and start sharing about the life transformation that we have had, because as leaders, we have all had to go through the program first and work on our stuff. And as you continue to be a leader, you continue to work on your stuff. It's never a one and done or over deal. It's a continuous ongoing process because what we learn at Celebrate Recovery is how to cope and live life in a more productive Christ-filled way. And that's an everyday thing. Um, but we, we did finally end the interview, but I get so excited to, you know, even be able to just say how many times we have seen people have miracles in their life and, and be set free and have chains broken off their life. It's amazing what happens. So does your lifestyle reflect what you say you believe? Just make sure what you're doing lines up with what you say you believe. First Timothy 1.5 says, Arouse the love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and a genuine faith. So it's about being humble. We need to be humble. We need to be sure that we are encouraging others. And we need to be ready to share our testimony at any time. And that doesn't mean, you know, a testimony can be shared when we share them at Celebrate Recovery. They're usually about 20 or 25 minutes. You need to have a couple minute summary of your testimony or just, you know, and it's not like, oh, what God did the day that I got saved or that I, you know, asked Jesus to be my savior or asked Jesus to be in my heart. It's your testimony is your ongoing life with Jesus. So you should continually have a testimony of what God is doing present day in your life, not only where he met you and brought you in to the kingdom, but what he's doing every day in your life. And just be willing to share that. That's being an example. So the S in yes is stands for serve. And serving is another amazing part of our recovery. Serve others just as Jesus did. So as you read through the New Testament and read about Jesus's life, in the Gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are four men that walked with Jesus on this earth, amazing, actually walked with him. And that's just their account of what they experienced, really. They just journaled what they experienced, and we get the privilege of reading that. And what you read in there is Jesus served the poor, the needy, the hurting. He didn't come to be served. He came to serve, and that's what he asks of, uh, of us. And it might seem ho-hum, like, oh boy, yeah, like I want to do that, right? You do want to do that. There is nothing more exciting than getting to serve others and helping another human being. And it's really difficult. That's something that really is hard uh, this year when we're to quarantine and we're to stay back from people but we have to pray and ask God to give us unique ways. Um, it can be a phone call. It can be doing something, you know, putting a nice thing together and leaving it on someone's porch. I mean, we have to be unique these days because we're not able to get together at the moment, but we will again, we will again be able to get together. So now that you're at this point, you should be able to pass it on and pay it forward in some sort of service to others um, at your church, in your community, um, and actually here at Celebrate Recovery, we would love to have you serve with us. Now, obviously, we're not there in person, but when we are, we have many ways that you can serve. Jesus did say, and we see in John 13, 14 through 15, and since I, the Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. So he wasn't just talking about the literal, literal act of washing feet. He was talking about service, about serving. And I've actually been in a foot washing uh, service. Um, my husband went to uh, the Brethren Church when he was growing up, and that was something they regularly did. That is a very humbling experience. Not only to wash someone else's feet, but for someone to wash your feet to actually physically do that is very humbling, but just the act of serving is the amazing thing. So different ways that you can serve here at Celebrate Recovery is you can be a greeter, you can start out 
you know, by helping um, just get set up and tear down. Um, if you're someone that's musically inclined, uh, we can have you help with worship because typically worship is a big part of what we do as well. Uh, when we get back to our regular services, um, we will have uh, food again, I hope, sometime. Uh, we usually have a meal to begin in a cafe at the end. But also, you know, the amazing thing is going through the program and training to be a leader, to facilitate and to help being a sponsor and an accountability partner, um, being in the tech room, helping with media. I mean, it's endless. But one thing you absolutely can do is you can always pray. Pray for all of us. So those are just a few ideas. Um, also get involved in your community. I personally help with Chevy Chase Community Center here in Indiana. It's an amazing place and there are a ton of places in Indiana and all the surrounding communities. I also am the chaplain for the Marion Center Firemen. So I help them, that's where I live, is in that little town. So I help those guys out um, just in that way. So it, it's endless how you can help people and how you can serve. So again, principle eight comes down to this. Do what you can with what you have where you are. Say yes. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And I hope um, that you will join us in our Zoom group. Um, so if you are not part of a step study, if you are, you already know um, the details of how to get in your Zoom. You will see um, here, uh, follow here on Facebook, and we'll give you a link to be able to get into what we call Open Share. And you can um, join myself and my husband in our groups, and we will um, actually go through um, some of this and have questions and help you to disseminate that in your life. And please know that Celebrate Recovery is a very confidential place and anonymity so what is said here stays here and we um, absolutely keep confidential who attends um, so you can ha have a safe place to come and share your things so again um, thanks for joining us love you all we will see you next week